Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn and in today's video I want to talk about how we deal with change and as I just have started a new job and in a new environment with new friends, with new co-workers, doing something outside my comfort zone that I haven't done before, I find myself struggling, I find myself feeling overwhelmed, I find myself feeling restless and stressed. Yeah, I've begun to settle in more and more at my work, but the beginning phase was difficult and it was hard and it was something that really overwhelmed me and really put me in a situation that was beyond my control. And you know, when you think about being an intuitive, I often say I'm a very intuitive person. I say I have a lot of ideas. I say I like abstraction. I say I like thinking about things from the bigger picture. I say I like complexity. I say I like uh, learning and exploring new theories and different beliefs. And I say I'm very open-minded, but then I begin to realize that there are levels that I'm less open to. There are things that I'm less open to change. There are things that I want to remain the same. There are things that I hold on to. There are things that mean a lot to me. And that is really important to consider as an intuitive. What are the things that you don't want to compromise on? What are the things that you don't want to change? What are the things that you prefer to remain as they are right now? And what I'm starting to realize is intuition is not openness to change. Intuition is openness to ideas. Intuition is openness to abstraction. It is believing in change on a hypothetical scale. It is having and considering different philosophical viewpoints. It is being able to consider any eventuality and to consider different patterns, to see different possibilities for how a situation could have gone down. It is the ability to think of abstract alternatives to a situation, things you could be doing instead of what you are doing. But intuition is also being closed to the more physical, the more immediate, the more direct reality. It is being a little more resistant towards the present. It is being a little more resistant towards your history. It is being a little more resistant uh, when it comes down to your own traditions and routines. And it is being a little more resistant to act. When you think of sensing and perceiving, you think of a person that is quick to action, a person open to action. If somebody says, let's do this, the sensing and perceiving type is going to be more open to it. They're going to say, yeah, that sounds great. That sounds fun. Let's try it. When you ask an intuitive perceiving type the same thing, they are more likely to come up with alternatives. No, I didn't want to do that, but maybe we could do this instead. The intuitive and perceiving process is thinking of alternatives and options. It is seeing, oh, we could do this or we could do that. Do you recognize yourself in being a person that likes to come up with options, likes to discuss alternatives? Or do you relate to being a person that likes to just act, to just do it, to just go out, to just take on, to just go with the flow, to just go with the crowd, what everyone else wants to do, to go along with it and to be the crowd and to be the one that it pushes and gets everyone else to act as well. What I'm starting to realize myself is I'm the kind of person that wants to do things my own way. I have my own way to do everything. My own process, my own structure, my own routine. Everything is very abstract for me. I have just laid out, this is how I like things to happen. In this way, uh, I don't like to do things the way the teacher says I should do it. I don't like to work the way my boss would have said to me to do something. I like to think of a better way. I like to think of this alternative streamlined process. I come up with an alternative streamlined process and then I stick to that. Then I work on and then I improve on that. I keep on improving on that abstract process. I come up with my own routines for how to solve things. I come up with an experiment with the, these routines and I think, well, maybe it should go like this. Maybe this is the better way to do it. And it's very difficult then when everything I do is mapped out and when everything is laid out and I have to log everything and I have to adhere to very strict rules and very strict procedures. I've said this when I apply for jobs, I prefer to work for a startup because when you work at older companies, sure, you do get a lot of security, you do get a lot of advantages, sure, you get a lot of benefits from it. 
but you also get a lot of rules. Everything has a process already. Everything has already been established. There's a right and a wrong way to do everything. And there is not as much room to be creative. I can't come up with my own way to do it. There's already backlogs. There are already other people doing the same thing. There are already people that have done this a thousand times and they know it much better than me. So who am I to question it as a newcomer? Or at least, even if I start at an older workplace, I want to start in a new position, in a new space that they've created, so that there is a chance for renewal, so that there is a chance of creating my own processes. My best work has been in organizations and projects that were completely new, completely refurbished, like where I had to say, where I could discuss how best to do it. And I generally work the best in par in discussion with intuitive and perceiving types, you know, the brainstormers, the alternators, the people that say, how about we do this instead? Or maybe you could try that instead. Or maybe we can switch to that. Or maybe we could experiment with this. I said it at my newest workplace, I was struggling with change. And what are the things I struggle with the most? I mean, I like my job. I like my colleagues. They all seem great. And uh, I'm really impressed with a lot of the things uh, associated with this workplace and I believe in the message they have but I find myself uh, stressed because still it puts me in a situation where I have to socialize a lot more than I'm used to I have to talk with people I have to be more on and you think I, 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 I sometimes think that oh I'm unusually extroverted for an introvert but then I realize when I'm talking to people that no I'm not <laughs> no I'm not I'm actually not uh, it's just that uh, while I have an, while I'm eager to share ideas and to express what's on my mind, the general interaction with people on a daily basis, the general shit or chat so that's going on, the general throwing out of ideas and working together with others is quite difficult. I prefer to sit in my own corner and do things on my own, in my own process, on my own speed. And... Um, I prefer the privacy, I prefer in so many ways uh, the ability to introspect than uh, the, inter the interpersonal interaction. I prefer to introspect on what people have said and what they've told me, to get a little from somebody else and then to take a step back to think about what they said, you know, the more slow, the more deep uh, conversations, the more careful discussions. and. Uh, the general interaction, interpersonal, that can actually stress me out. I'm actually quite open on that level, but I find myself absorbing so many emotions and taking in so many perspectives and so many viewpoints that after a while, it's like I go into force introspection mode. I become super contemplative, I become super quiet, and I start just thinking about everything because they've given me so much, you know, and I'm with people all the time. They give me so much, there's so much going on, so much being thrown out, so much to process. And it's like when I went to convents uh, and I would hang out and socialize for two days straight, I would come home and I would crash. It was like I had been, uh, like I had been accumulating information and my brain was just telling me process, process, process. And eventually if I wouldn't, they would, uh, uh, my body would just give me a short uh, anxiety attack and tell me basically, uh, you sit down right now and you deal with this. And um, it leaves me no choice. Like I have to slow down. I have to be more thoughtful. I have to be more careful. I have to really think about things. And I have to slow down. You know, I also feel like uh, the way I am as a person, I want to do so well at everything. I want to do things great. I want to be so fast. I want to work so hard. I want to impress, I want to live up to people's expectations, and I want to give, make everyone happy. And uh, when you work with customer service, you can't make everyone happy. Sometimes you have to disappoint. Sometimes there's nothing you can do to remedy a situation if something bad has happened. And uh, then I have to take a step back from that and not get so caught up in that and not feel so bad. I felt so bad sometimes when I handled some errands. So disappointed in my own handling of it and so also uh, wishing I could do something else. But now I'm starting to feel better about it. I'm starting to learn to manage it better. 
And it's like you have to pace yourself to a change. When you're going to a change, when you're going to a new house, to a new place, to a new environment, when you're going traveling, when you're in a new environment, for me that's extremely disorienting. I become very overwhelmed in new situations, in new environments. I love to create and come up with ideas for a change and for travels. But when I'm actually traveling, I get exhausted by st stressed by the lace, uh, overwhelmed by finding my way to the hotel with everything that's going on. Like that can be so difficult. So I have to really pace myself through a change process. And I have to make sure I keep leading through intuition that I don't lose my head in a sense. Uh, because often it is the intuition that helps me be more open. It is by channeling and expressing my intuition and by allowing myself to have ideas and to go abstract on something to imagine that I can deal with it. If I'm starting to get stressed out, I will close my eyes, I will take a deep breath. I would imagine myself what my next steps would be, how I would go through it, and then I would execute that. And having that vision in my head, it would just help me stave off so much of the stress. And so that's my advice to all of you intuitives. Lead with your intuition through a change process. If you're getting overwhelmed by change, reclaim your intuition in this process. Reclaim your privacy. Every moment you have, take a step back to give yourself privacy. Reclaim your freedom. Every chance you have, make sure you have freedom. Make sure that you can do what you want and that you have a say in how you do things and in what way you do it. Reclaim your independence. Make sure that you can decide how to do something. Make sure that you get the freedom to do things your way, to follow your own path, to go things at things your own way. Yeah, change is great, but allow yourself to have change the way you want it. Allow yourself to make demands and to say, I want it to go like this. And if you're a catalyst, allow yourself to have alternatives. If people are trying to throw change into you, allow yourself to say, yeah, change sounds good, but only if we do it that way, to come up with alternatives, to come up with a the way to do it that gives you spin on it, that gives you an outlet for your imagination. It's all about giving your imagination an outlet that will allow you to consider the change that is ahead of you, that will allow you to uh, have a kind of process for it, to filter it, for your mind to understand it. If you don't let your imagination come through this process as an intuitive, it feels like a foreign invasion. It feels like you are being forced into something, that you have no control over something, that you are being pushed into something. And that feels very overwhelming on so many levels. It feels frustrating. It like makes you feel frustrated with something. It makes you feel upset with something. It makes you feel afraid of something. It makes you feel nervous about something to an unnecessary degree. And uh, those nerves, those fears, those frustrations, those uh, upsets, they are just a signal, an emotional signal that what you're dealing with right now is beyond your current control. And you need to take back that Set space for yourself, set boundaries for yourself, allow yourself outlets, hobbies, allow your interests to come up. Basically, that's what you're doing when you're going through this process and when you're taking it over. You're letting your own interests come into play in a situation. If you have personal interests, personal ways you would like something to be, personal hobbies, personal things you find fun, things you find enjoyable, find things you find interesting, then that should be what goes, that, that should be the entire change process for you. That should be everything about the change, going into another country, going to a new environment, taking on a new job. It should be an outlet for your imagination. So it should be an outlet for your interests. It should be an outlet for how you want things to happen and in what way. So you should be saying, yeah, at this workplace, I want to be able to do this and I want to be able to learn that and I want to be able to try out this theory and I want to be able to do it this way and I want to be able to try to do it that way. Like, allow yourself to have interests, allow yourself to have personal interests and personal viewpoints, personal perspectives on something. And you'll find that when you do and when the environment is open to this, 
it will become a lot more relaxing, a lot more fun, a lot more worthwhile, and it will make you brave. It will make you strangely brave. It's like when you go into a situation blind without personal interest in it, it's scary because there is nothing to gain, no foreseeable thing to get from it. But when there is something to gain, when there is some kind of thing, some kind of thing you can earn from it, some kind of interest that you can get from it, that gives you bravery. Like it's the strangest way thing. It makes you brave because it gives you, uh, it gives you some thinking of that thing you will get. It gives you courage. So with that in mind, I hope you all enjoyed this video. And if you're going through a change process, if you are in a new workplace or in a new place, if you moved if to a new uh, city or new country or new pl uh, place, new friends, everything, tell me how did you get through it? How are you gonna get through it? If you've been through this before, how did you get through it? What made it worthwhile? What made it fun? What made it interesting? Share this experience in the comments down below and if you like this video leave a like and share it to other people that are going to change. Perhaps it will help, perhaps it will make it easier. At least that's my hope. Thank you all for watching this video and I hope to see you all in the next one.